Oh yes, we are cooking ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, yeah, and I'm doing well mate, I really do hope that, good feelings, ahoy, ahoy, yeah, good feelings, ahoy, and ahead for Chelsea Football Club, um, today on this video that I am presenting to you, some really positive news regarding Andre Santos, our Brazilian sensation, Nizar Kinsella's report on what's been going on with Pochettino and the gang. And the Saudis not letting go of Romelu Lukaku. Pleasant news for me. And a new little update for the channel. Here it is. You ain't so tough with that bad boy talk. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Bringing back the intro, ladies and gentlemen. I just made it earlier. I thought, you know what? It's my song. You know, I still get royalties for that tune. People missed it from the outro. A lot of people don't wait to the end of videos, which is just how YouTube works, it's, you know, not a criticism, I'm the same, but, um, yeah, and I don't want to have played too much of the song, so I'll only do a few seconds, but I'll put a beginning of a hook in at the beginning, so I can trigger it after I do an intro, you ain't so tough with that bad boy talk, Urgh, it's back baby, and so am I, thank you for joining me, it's going to be a fun video, if you want to support the content, you are welcome to by liking and subscribing, uh, that's very kind of you, oh, oh you're doing it now, Yeah. All right, then. Let's quickly talk about Romelu Lukaku, Cy Phillips aggregating, citing news on him. The Saudis are not letting go of Romelu Lukaku. He has expressed his interest in Saudi Arabia during his interest, uh, during his interest, during his meeting in Paris with the president of Al Halal on Monday, the, uh, the 12th of June, so eight days ago. His priority is to stay in Europe, but Lukaku has kept in touch with the Saudis. Uh, and this is coming from Sasha Tavoliliri, Belgium journalist. Of course, Romelu is Belgian. So, you'd imagine he knows what he's talking about. Anyway, this is good. Saudis would, of course, take all the wages. Not that Chelsea are going to pay any wages of Lukaku going forward, but, you know, Chelsea of old and some other big clubs would have had to do that in a compromise. We're going to wipe the slate clean, and the Saudis, you would think, with all their money, would give us £40 million sterling. Which is, you know, in context, good. From the disaster and harrowing fever dream that has been the Romelu Lukaku transfer to Chelsea. Let it end. This heavy, heavy toxic weight that's dragging us all down. And we want to fly and evolve and be new. And be good again. Young Chelsea, you know, charged with new European talent, South American flair, some, you know, uh, academy graduates like your Matsons, your Halls, your Levi's, mm, 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 mm. led by Reese James, who will eventually return. You know, it's a new dawn. We want to feel good. That's what we're all about. Speaking of South American flair, let's give you the update on Andre Santos. Coming from Ben Jacobs, the CBS journalist, seemingly quite well connected. Nice chap, he just seems like a nice boy, you know? There's too many See You Next Tuesdays out there, and he's just a nice guy. So, it's, you know, be nice. He said, can confirm, Andre Santos now has a UK work permit. So he's done, the visa's there, the permit's there, allowing him to play for Chelsea this upcoming season. Oh, Santos previously missed out on obtaining by a single point. Of course, Chelsea wanted him in the starting line, well, the, the first team in January, straight away when they got him. But they loaned him back. He's since played the under-20 championship, won, wore the captain's armband. And you think he'll be better for that to come into the Chelsea team now after a full pre-season. But it's done. His permit has been approved by the FA. The FA... Uh, eased the criteria for clubs signing overseas talent. Santos would have got a work permit in January when he signed, had the rules been changed back then. We don't care about back then, though. We're looking forward. Feels good. All the players that cannot achieve this work permit, this is what the Strasbourg, you know, what's that um, meme? That's when the Strasbourg comes in. <laughs> From that show, everybody likes that I watched two episodes of, and I was like, yeah, it's fine. Money heist. Yeah, I love watching all kinds of shows, but I, I don't know, Money Heist wasn't for me. I'm sorry, guys. And loads of people loved it. Anyway, I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking about the great Andre Santos and the future of Chelsea. And let's learn a little bit more about that 
with Brew and his art can sell his article in the Evening Standard, shall we? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. <clears throat> Nizar writes, Maurizio Pochettino's start at Chelsea has been punishing for his players, but fans were given a glimpse of his vision for the future in his first game in charge. Of course, Chelsea dominated possession for 90 minutes and eased to a 5-0 win over Wrexham as Pochettino began to imprint his identity on a young team which featured 10 debutants. Yeah, that's pretty profound. Usually, this, that is, you know, testament to how heavy a transition we are in. Ten debutants. You think pre-season, a couple of new signings, you know, maybe an academy kid here and there, maybe three, four, maybe five. Ten. And you can imagine, and counting, bringing in new signings, maybe flying them out to the USA to join pre-season. <clears throat> it is a glimpse of the future. It's, you know, Pochettino's favoured 4-2-3-1 formation. I did watch the extended highlights. The only game I can actually watch to do when I do a review on is probably the Fulham game because that's in, you know, UK time. Um, but yeah, I watched the extended highlights. I looked at the stats, of course. I've since heard an analysis of Matson playing uh, wide as a forward and, you know, Cassidy, they're having great moments, but not always perfect. And people are really, really impressed with Angelo as well or Angelo or however you say it. Um, I definitely didn't say it right there. Uh, and, you know, which is great. Really, really positive. Um, this These youngsters are the ones that need more time to impress because there's probably players behind them that we know is going to be part of the team. Like, just, you know, Mudrick hasn't proven himself, uh, you know, to Chelsea yet, really. But we know he's part of the plans because he's such a huge investment. <clears throat> Enzo has proved himself. And, of course, he's been a big investment as well. But these youngsters are getting a chance first. Chelsea, uh, dip, 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 ten debutants. After two weeks of 8.30 a.m. starts, I get up at 6 every day, or some 6 30. But, but so the day probably if they're starting at 8.30, so good on him. Uh, but yeah, footballers don't like to get up early, I think. So getting up at 8.30, uh, two weeks of that. Grueling double training sessions, hours running on grass, and strength and conditioning work in the gym. This was the start of the Chelsea fight back. You're the best around. Nobody's gonna never think me down, etc. Um, you know, pick your own kind of like montage. You could do Rocky, you know, Eye of the Tiger. Um, yeah, there's others. <laughs> New arrivals: Malo Gusto, Cesare Casade, Andre Santos, the aforementioned now the work visa permit, and Nico Jackson all started as they bid to impress Pochettino. Also worth me saying as I try to gauge the fan opinion, I wasn't doing the Daniel Sturridge there, um, gauge the fan opinion about how people felt about N Nico Jackson. Of course, he got an assist, I believe. I think. Um, regardless, his play was pretty impressive as a conventional um, four, uh, well, I was say conventional number nine, and Kunku playing up front as well as a striker. So, mm. But impressive nonetheless in the final third, Nick Jackson. A three-man midfield of Santos, Cassidy, and Carney Chukwameka impressed in a team with an... <laughs> this blows my mind. This... How is this even possible? Hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say these words. A team with an average age of 19. The average age. Not, not, the, not the youngest. The average age of 19. How is that even possible? I mean, it is possible because apparently it's happened. What, do we do we bring in some fetuses in there to, like, lower the age a little bit? That is wild, bro. Like, what's a Premier League? There's some Premier League t games, like, average age of 29. Like, literally 10, 10 years older, you know, 28 average usually. Because you get, like, a couple of senior players in there, and then a lot of, you rarely have youngsters in there. Of course, Pochettino started with his favoured 4 2 3 one formation. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Conor Gallagher came on at half time uh, while there was. Uh, 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 well, there is Enzo Fernandez, Chelsea are light in midfield options. We are big time. We are trying to sign Moises Caicedo. I think I saw someone in the comments of a previous video say <laughs> it would be the most. It would be the most, like our owner's thing to do to like really secretly try and uh, do something that's never been done before right I'd be like, how can we get like the attention of everyone yet 
man. How can we like do something groundbreaking like theater, man? Well, this is what you do is you speak to Brighton, you give them the money they want for Moises Caicedo, you start the Brighton game with him in a Brighton shirt. And then at halftime, he switches changing rooms. He comes out in a Chelsea shirt. I mean, that would make headlines, wouldn't it? And of course you can do it as a friendly friggin' Pochettino. Nizar himself asked Pochettino about a player coming off and coming back on. And that's against the rules. But they were like, yeah, but we asked, you know, the opposition team. We asked the refs and they said it's fine. In the same way, you could do it with this. Just say, can we do a Caicedo halftime, you know, shirt switch comes out. And it would just be like a fun little thing. And they'll be really like... You know, it, w- it would be funny. Like, ever, everyone would talk about it. Like, why not? It sounds ridiculous, probably largely because it is. But um, it would be very, very funny. And, you know, might as well have a laugh. Uh, there is a lack of experience in the midfield. Pochettino may well um, need Santos, 19. Cassidy, 20. Oh, Chuck Wemeck is 19 as well. I keep thinking he's like 21 or 22 or something. To be ready to compete in the Premier League. It's a tall order, man. The Premier League is brutal. So Santos is an £18 million signing from Vasco da Gama in January. Is perhaps the most likely to make the breakthrough next season. The Brazilian was one of the best players on the pitch against Wrexham. Taking up clever positions and linking the play well. Yeah, long have Chelsea fought. Santos is the one. Hence why we've been pushing for a work permit for so long. For him to play in the first team. Excuse me. I realise that sniffing up snot into the microphone isn't the best broadcast technique. Uh, He uh, seemed to impress Pochettino, who said this. Pochettino said this. They have the profile and only need the time. So he's like, yeah, they're the right kind of style of player, the profile. They are young. We cannot forget we are in Chelsea. The pressure is always to win. They need to have the place to have time to evolve. But yes, the profile is good. So he's saying the types of players are good, but... Chelsea need to win so we can't mess about with like you know kids just kids exclusively Jackson and Christopher and Cuckoo the 52 million pounds summer signing from Leipzig which by the way is looking more and more and more like a ruddy snip especially considering goals cost uh, money both impressed as they both played half as number nine. There you go. So Jackson did play as number nine as well as Nkunku. Um, Nkunku was a bit quieter but produced the moment of quality late on with a smart finish. So Jackson probably a bit more an all-action number nine. Probably because he is a number nine. Makes total sense. But Nkunku gets his moment where he splits the defenders and rounds the keeper. Like he would as a second striker or number 10 as well. Which is really his preferred role. And he will do the Deli Alley role under Pochettino almost certainly. Chelsea have showed many of the characteristics we knew from Pochettino's team at Tottenham. The Blues tried to press despite the extreme heat, and they maintained possession well. Ben Chilwell scored from an overlapping run into the box, which we all know well from uh, Chile, highlighting the adventurous spirit Pochettino wants from his fullbacks. But that's just Chilwell personified as well, isn't it? He loves a bit of that. So it doesn't surprise me too long. Of course, Matson impressed with two goals, and he will be giving Pochettino some... food for thought the left back seems likely well he seemed likely to depart but he said after the game that he wants to force his way into Pochettino's plans next season and how I want that as well I'm all in I'm on the Matson train choo choo heck I'm driving Pochettino says uh, he was happy with the runner as he begins a major rebuilding job Chelsea co-owners Bedad Egbali, Jose uh, Feliciano were in attendance and shared an embrace with Pochettino after the match. That's nice. Hopes are high for next season, but one senior figure acknowledged, quote, We know after last season, <laughs> we can't take anything for granted. No, sorry. I am going to have recurring trauma symptoms from last season for a long time to come. So let's get excited. I like getting jacked up and excited on just Chelsea being good as every, you know, I'm not, I, I, you, you know me if you watch the channel, ever the optimist and I would try and remain that way. And, you know, a 5 nil win with some youngsters and good players to come. There's plenty of reason to be optimistic about everything really. So, but temper that with a reminder of essentially, yeah, what happened last preseason. It was gnarly. It was dark. It was scary. 
And it was frightening. I mean, that's the same scary. Anyway, let me know what you think. Comment down below, please. I'll be very interested in learning your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on uh, the Saudi links for uh, Lukaku, the work permit for Andre Santos, and anything you enjoyed in the in his article that you wanted to talk about. Love reading your comments. You've all got such good footballing minds, which I think is a compliment to me because I've cultivated such a good audience of you guys over the years. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Turn the bell on and peace.